So, hi everyone, this is Shelia Stevens from ShaliaStevens.com where we teach you how to bring your expertise online, reach broader audiences, leverage your time and obviously doing in doing so to grow your business. And today I'm speaking with Donna Carvada from SocialSagePR.com. Welcome to the interview, Donna. I'm so excited. I've been waiting like the whole day and the whole week to start talking to you. How are you today? I am great. Thank you. And thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here and I'm very excited to talk to your audience. Yes, I'm, I'm very excited. I'm sure that they're going to be interested in everything that you have to say. And I'm, I'm so excited because um, in this interview today, we're going to be doing a mix up, like a mix up and a mash up because we're going to be talking about social media and followers and we're going to be tying that into webinar and online business. And I, I love this about you, Donna, is that, you know, you, you mix social media with PR and, you know, you don't see any boundaries in these two things. And I think, you know, all of our marketing communication in the online space, every way we bring our expertise online is all connected. And um, so I'm excited to explore that with you today. And I wanted to talk to you specifically um, because of your social media expertise, but I also know that you, you know, use webinars in your own business in different ways, you know, to market your business, but also to deliver services. And, you know, in our little pre-discussion just a minute ago, you're like, oh, I have some other good things <laughs> that I'm going to share with you. And the reason that, you know, we're focusing on webinars um, sort of as a focal point in our interview today is because I'm working on a book. I'm doing some research around the subject of webinars and how to use it as a marketing tool in particular. And um, I just really can't wait to get some insight about that. Um, so Donna, before we begin, would you like to just introduce yourself and talk just a, just a few minutes about, you know, what you do, who you help with what, so they can, the audience can just get an idea of who we're talking with today. Absolutely. Um, my name is Donna Carvana, and my company is SocialSagePR.com, and we create, we combine social media and PR in a very innovative way. And I am a very practical person. I like to do everything simply. I don't like to add layers of fluff to things, and. Um, um, we just really um, make it very simple to be able to um, go online, find the conversations and the relationships that you need to be involved in. And, you know, I teach my clients and members of my program how to do this for themselves and how to build this in the fabric of their own business. So it's really cost effective. Um, one one success can change your business. And I am seeing results every single day. I cannot divulge yet, but... Um, one of my clients got in touch with me yesterday, and she has an opportunity um, that just came because she had everything set up the right way. Um, and she is going to be involved in, like, this enormous um, special feature oh, wow. for industry, and it's going to be shared with over 250 online markets, major online oh, markets. Okay, okay. And I mean, the opportunities, she sent me what they said to her, and um, she said, well, what do I do? <laughs> and I went through, and I spent about an hour just writing out all of the potential opportunities that came from this. Wow. And, I mean, this is, she, this is, she, she's, a, she's a medical professional. She's an academic. She does not have a background in marketing and social media and PR, and she has been doing this for about a year. Yeah. So she it's, doesn't need that background, right? Because you teach doesn't. people how to do like, that I, themselves. I don't like the sideline for what I do, but I mean, basically, <laughs> I, 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 I teach social media and PR in a very effective way, but what it's turning into is just endless possibilities. I mean, I, I just don't know any other way to put it. It's, I am amazed. I've been doing this for years, and I'm amazed at where this is going every single day. So um, I'm just having a ball. <laughs> I know you are, Donna, and it doesn't surprise me at all that you get off yourself right onto your clients because I know how excited that you get about the successes that they're having, and uh, that that that's really awesome. And you know, I what I wanted what I wanted to jump in with you today about is the webinars. It's just a thing we just talked about. Sure. So. Maybe you could just share with the people who are watching this video or listening in um, how you used have used webinars in the past in your business to reach these awesome clients that you're working with, and how are you using them today in your business? Okay, 
Well, um, I use them for, um, you know, of course, you know, I'm in the middle, middle of a launch now, so we're using, I'm, I'm offering a webinar, um, you know, to teach people more of what I do and to kind of, you know, use that as a vehicle for sales and for list building and, and things like that. And that's more of the traditional way. Um, and it, I've had great success with that. And, um, you know, sometimes you get a lot of people on, sometimes you don't get that many people on. But the opportunity with webinars that's nice is that you can record them. And then you can set up evergreen marketing around these webinars. And you can use them, you can even break out segments of them and use them for different things. So it's a really easy way to create an interactive experience right. for your audience. And, um, and a very cost-effective way to do that as well. And you don't need a lot of skill to do it. You know, you don't need videographers and editors and copywriters. You know, you can really do this quite simply and on your own. And um, I really like that because as small business owners, we're all limited on budget and wherever we can save um, it really is it's helpful. Um, and now on that topic as well, if you're going to be investing in the webinar platform, you want to be able to use it for more than one thing. Yes, recycling. So, yeah. so then, <laughs> I, I use any meeting. Um, I'm probably about ready to move away from it because there's a limit of 200 seats and I'm growing fast. Right. Um, but it's a great platform and, um, you know, for the price point, which, you know, for the premium package is about $79 a month. Yeah. It, it's a really quality, good, solid product. They've got great customer service. They've got all the bells and whistles. Um, and I've been using it now for about a year with okay. great success. Um, but here's some of the other things I like to do with it. Okay. I do, use it internally in my business. Okay. And um, I use it to train team. Mm -hmm. We do web sessions. Mm -hmm. um, so I just brought on two new team members who are taking, off, uh, taking over a lot of the responsibilities right. that I had in the past done. And um, the transition was so easy. In like a month, they had taken over like half of the work that I was doing mm -hmm. because I just started... Uh, look, I would be working and I would just say, oh, well, if I could just record this, I could just send this to them and then they'll know exactly what I'm doing and I don't have to type up a big yes. long documentation about this. So what I would do is I would put on my webinar software and just start recording what is share my screen with myself. Right. Like, talk to yourself. Show everything talk. you're doing. <laughs> And just, you know, and do whatever it is I was doing. And I could make notes in the, in the, in the chat box if I oh, wanted. Love that. And, and then I would just send them the link. I'm not using up any of my storage space because I'm sending them a link. Um, you know, it's, you know, it's just super easy to do. Um, and the other thing that we did is we, like, um, I had somebody that was, we, we were setting up, like, sequences in Infusion. And we, we spent, like, five hours together online yes. doing this. And we did it in a web session. Okay. So and what also did, recording it. Recorded, but what we did is we broke it into several web sessions so she didn't have a five-hour video to right. go through. So what we did was we, we broke out the day and we were like, okay, for this hour we're going to work on this and for this hour we're going to work on this. And we, we did them individually so she can go back and, and see exactly what I wanted as far as the sequences go. And this was so productive because, um, you know, it's not something that corresponds well to paper. Right. And it's not something that's kind of difficult to do virtually because you're not in the same room together. Yes. Um, it really did address many of the challenges, and it went off without a hitch. I mean, she had a couple of questions. I answered her questions. I said, oh, well, now if we're going to do this. Maybe we should do that. But, I mean, for the most part, it was done. And that was that was as was off my plate. She knew what she had to do. She was happy. I was happy. Yes. Um, she was productive. I saved time. And, you know, it's all included in that $79 I'm paying a month. <laughs> I love that. And so... That is any meeting, and I know I know there's a, a version of that that's for, for free, but I think advertising is, is clicked in there. And I, yes. I have, I have, for example, I use GoToWebinar and Adobe Connect, so I'm paying for my um, GoToWebinar right now, also around 79 euro a month, um, mm -hmm. and also 55 for Adobe Connect. So you know that that's a that's a good reasonable price, but yeah. you're experiencing uh, you know some limits for for the seating right now that you're going to be expanding, but that's a good place to start. It is a good place to start, and the free version does not allow you to record. Okay. So uh, they have a lower price version, which I think is about twenty-five dollars a month, yeah. or twenty or twenty-five dollars a month, which has all of the features, but it only has twenty-five seats. Okay. So if you're only going to be using this for internal purposes, or you know you're going to have small groups, yes. just do the twenty-five dollar one, and um, it's 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 been it's been a really um, effective tool for me. I mean, I, I just 
thankfully, <laughs> grew very fast. And um, I didn't realize that they didn't have an enterprise option. Okay. Uh, but, you know, when I started, you know, cost was really an issue. Right. And it was the most cost effective way to do this at the time. Yes, yes. And it's an issue for everyone when they're starting out. You know, there's so many things you could be investing in. You need to be really smart about, you know, what you select, what you choose. And so, yeah, absolutely. Okay. And there's one other thing that I do with this that's really cool. I do these big social PR projects for clients where I, um, these are like my private clients and I totally revamp their social media. I create all of their PR collateral and I come up with strategies and plans for them both, you know, for you know, starting out in three months and then, you know, we move on into you know, the more time after that. But they're very big projects and a lot of the work that I do for them is stuff that they've never done before. So um, there's a lot of hand-holding, a lot of mindset stuff that comes up because this is, you know, people putting themselves out there it's in a big way. Like, showing up, being, getting out there, which is not uh, easy. Uh, it's a courage. <laughs> so there's a lot of hand-holding involved and there's a lot of showing them what to do. And I also help train their teams. So um, quite often I'm on a call with a business owner and a virtual assistant or a business owner and, you know, whatever team, a business partner, a team member it might be, and I'm having two different conversations. So unless I could show them what I'm doing, it's very confusing. So I just, these meetings, they're sometimes two, two and a half hours long. I do them in my webinar software. So they, everybody can call in. There's no limitation to how many people, you know, the 200, but, you know, yeah, I'm not having... Not that many people on a team, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if it's two or three or four people, we have everybody come together. And I just, before I get on the phone with them, I just open up every window that I'm going to need for this meeting and every document that I'm going to need. And I have a, a you know, a... a system that I go through, how I, you know, how I show yes. them everything that I do and answer all of their questions. And again, I can keep notes. They can write notes in the sidebar and, and everything is in one place. And it works out really well. And they have a recording. They can go back and refer to it. Um, if they get a new employee, they can give it to a new employee. We don't have to, they, they don't get in touch with me and say, oh, I've hired somebody new. Can we go through this again? Yes. Which you know, I mean, at that point, you're either eating that time or you're building them for something that kind of goes into a little bit of a weird zone. Yeah. So it really, I mean, just for that alone, it's worth the $79 yes, a month. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I so get that. You know, I also work with my private clients and meet a lot of times in the webinar system instead of on Skype. Even though you can record on Skype if we're doing something on the whiteboards or we're pulling up, you know, different documents that I've prepared in advance and I can record that. It's such a, um, a value if they can go back and look at that later. Right. Isn't that a great value that you're providing your clients as well? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you can upload documents in there. I mean, it's just it, it really is a good tool. Um, when you're working virtually, you have to find ways, um, not only with clients and per prospective clients, but internally, you have to find ways to make it a cohesive group. Yeah. And um, you know, this is a way to do that, and, and it, it really is effective. And I find that, you know, if one of my team members has a question, <clears throat> instead of spending a half an hour on the phone trying to explain it, you know, getting online together and doing this together online could be five minutes, and that saves us both. Because now I'm, if I have to get on the phone with a team member for a half an hour, that's a half an hour of my time, and I'm paying for a half an hour. Yeah. But if we can resolve this quickly in five minutes, this – the, the cost of this tool pays for itself very, very quickly. Absolutely. I love I love this idea. So, you know, what you're saying is, you know, once you've making the investment, you can use it for your marketing, you can use it for your internal team communication, you can use it for working with your clients. There are just so many possibilities for these tools. I, I, I love that. So if we if we go back to the, the subject of, of webinar marketing, because we were talking about that before, you said, you know, I use education-based marketing to do my launches, you know, I teach something, and then I, I tie that into bringing the people on board to my programs. So that that's what I'm going to be focusing on in my book for the most part. Maybe, maybe I'll just write all kinds of books about any, all these ways you can use webinars. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> Like <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but if we get if we get back to the to this you know idea of the the webinar. So, what what I often hear from people is they 
you know, they might have a list of, of email, um, you know, people who are signed up to their email list. Um, they may have some followers already. So let's just begin with the people who already have some people who they can, you know, get in touch with. And let's assume they've already started their social media following. Whatever that could be, you are going to tell me in just a minute. And because, you know, when I first started doing my webinars, um, I didn't have an email list yet, but I started, you know, contacting people on LinkedIn, started contacting people on Facebook, and then I would just, you know, kind of ping out those invitations um, to people and say, hey, come to the webinar, and I, you know, get them, get them pick them up from there and um, to try to build a relationship in, the, in those 60 minutes and do that know, like, and trust factor and then lead to my offers. The problem is that a lot of people, especially here in the European market, and you're in, you're in the U.S. on the East Coast, and but maybe some people there have similar issues, is that people are just afraid of bothering the, their followers, and um, they you know are timid, intimidated by inviting them to come to a webinar on a regular basis, maybe. So I, I wanted to talk with you about that. Like, so what what would you recommend? You're active online, you know, you're bringing people onto your webinars from your social media. What's, what are some tips and some rules of thumb that they can follow so they don't have to worry about, you know, inviting people on a regular basis and feeling bothersome? Okay, well, if, you know, if you have people on your list, um, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, it, I feel like if you can't reach out to them, as long as you're not spamming them and, you know, like every week saying, come to this and come to this and come to this. Um, <clears throat> but if you occasionally reach out to them and offer them a value-packed, um, free offering in a topic that they're interested in, um, why would they not want to come? You know, so I, I really feel that when people have a lot of pushback from their list, their list is probably not full of the right people. Okay, okay. Um, so, I mean, it's really a list analysis. Another thing you can do is you might have different types of people on your list, and there might be a segment of your list um, that is open to this type of marketing. And if that's the case, then you would want to segment your list and you know send offers such as webinars and free offerings like that just to that portion of your list yeah. because if you have a portion of your list that you communicate a different message to yeah. you don't want to lose them but you want to communicate um, a message that they're open to receiving mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um you know just separate out your 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 um your, your the people on your list based on things that they're interested in. And a good way to do that is through a survey and just asking them what they want. And most of the um, email management tools have built in some type of built-in feature where you can ask people what their preferences are right. and then it will assign them to the right list. Right. So it doesn't need to be a big bear of a, of a um, you know, of, 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 a, of, a, of a project to do, but um, with, with, with working with a list, it's really important to talk to people about what interests them, yeah. because if, you know, it, this, you can't send one universal message out to, you know, a thousand or two thousand or three thousand people, they might not all have the same interests. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, that's really important. Okay, so if you know, begin, begin. So I'm hearing, begin with the list. Be sure you've got the right people on there. You know, be sure you're sending the right messages to the right people. Um, so going, coming back to social media, what is, in your opinion, the best way to really use like a Facebook or a Twitter or a LinkedIn or other platforms, Pinterest even, to invite to invite people to webinar? What's what's an adequate you know form to do that? Um, all of the above. Pinterest, um, I wouldn't do too much promotion of webinars because on Pinterest, um, the content should be more evergreen. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, maybe if you have an evergreen type webinar that you just have running, and I mean, that's a great thing to do too. Just have one that runs continuously on the same day of the month. You know, they have software, I think, um, I think it's called Evergreen, evergreen Webinar. Evergreen Business System, yeah, yeah. yeah where you can set things up and um, you could just have them go automatically and once you record this webinar it's set up with all the appropriate autoresponders and everything and you know, there's some setup time up front but you know it's something that could just go and go and go and continually build your list and bring this steady stream of people in. Um, the other thing that I recommend um, um, is just connecting with people. Knowing that the most important thing that you can do on social media is know your audience, know the words they're using, you know the conversations they're in. Listen, because um, if you listen, you're going to connect with the right people. Um, I am a big believer in the quality over the quantity of the people on social media, um, because I really feel if you have ten thousand people that are following you 
and these are 10,000 people that have no interest in what you're doing, they create a barrier. Yes. And if you have, I mean, I've had clients with a couple of hundred followers on Facebook that have done phenomenally well because they were a couple of hundred people that had interest in what she was saying. So every single day she had 350 people that cared about what she said, which was so much more powerful than 10,000 people that didn't. So um, really focus on the conversations. And if you can incorporate the words that your ideal clients, that the media that you would want to report on you, if you can incorporate the words that they're using, the words that their audiences are using in your marketing online, yes. you create a level of comfort and trust yes. that you can't buy. Okay. Okay. So listen to what they're saying, what they need. Um, incorporate those so if, if we're you know getting back to tie into the webinar so then you would be creating a webinar where you were listening to what they want you would give them that anyway you know build your programs on that but even even better and so when you, when you start to invite to that then they're gonna be like yes that's exactly what I want she's listening to me or he's listening to me and then you can you can bring that invite in that space is that correct Absolutely. And that will work on any one of the platforms. And um, you, what happens when you do that is you just build this trust. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, or when you try to sell somebody right away, they, they go hands up and, and you have to go into a space where you're convincing them. Yeah. But you build that trust first and you um, engage in a dialogue and you engage in a relationship. The, you know, the sale just happens. It, you know, they come to you ready because you have what they need. Um, another thing is to use your success stories. Um, you know, if, if, if you've got good results for your clients, let your clients tell the story for you. Because when somebody else is talking about how great you are, it's way more effective yeah. than you say how great you Absolutely. are. Absolutely. Trust that. They're like, oh. I mean, even if they don't know you, oh, she looks nice, she looks honest, she's got a credible business, and this is working for her, why wouldn't it work for me too? And, as, um, you know, just by creating these subtleties in your communication, you build a system, and it quickly happens, because people really want to trust, and they want to like you, and they want to, I mean, we're all in the small business zone, we want to do business with people, we don't want to do business with logos. Right. If you can create that trust, what will end up happening is you'll create a trust with a small group of people. That small group of people will quickly grow, and social media is a magnificent tool for doing that because everything you share with this small group of people that know, like, and trust you goes out to the people that they know, like, that, that know, like, and trust them. So it just quickly grows, and what happens is when you do it this way and you build these relationships built on, you know, common ground and respect, um, you quickly grow in a very big network of people that are in the same place. Right, right. And, 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 you know, these are people that want, want what you have and want to interact the way you're interacting. So it's, it's very, very valuable. So I have a question for you, Donna, because, you know, I, I, I get that, you know, that listening and that creating relationships and building trust. And I think sometimes what people struggle with, and, it, and I, I'm included in this, in this um, you know, batch of people, is you know, how does one listen in that space? Like, for example, if you've got your Facebook fan page and you're posting there every day, you know, trying to bring kind of like a good mix of you know, maybe some personal information with some useful information and then promotional information, how does the actual listening take place and, and the dialogue take place? I really like to do that in Hootsuite, which is a social media management tool. And it doesn't need to be Hootsuite. There are tons of tools out there. That just happens to be the one that I use. But um, when you go into Hootsuite, you can really narrow down the conversation based on searching, creating these saved searches in columns. And um, when you do that, you kind of close out, you make this little soundproof room for yourself, and you close out all of the other noise that's on social media, and you just concentrate on the words, on the people, on the hashtags that are relevant to you. Okay. And it doesn't need to be a huge amount. Like when I start working with people, I say, pick you know, two or three words, two or three hashtags, two or three influencers, 
um, two or three competitors and two or three media that you would like to report on you and start following all of that. And what happens is it, it, it's almost like this little social media conversational mind map that pops up. And this isn't something that you can outsource to somebody else to do. You need to do this as the business owner because you'll see things that somebody else won't yes. see. And, um, and it takes about two weeks to get really proficient at pulling out these conversations and these opportunities. But I mean, every single one of my clients that has done this has had that total light bulb moment and has had opportunities that, you know, what happens is you see these conversations and you see who, who's in the conversations and you're like, oh, well, that's an interesting person. And look at those like 2,000 other interesting mm. people that do. So now you've just fallen into a network. Okay, you fall into this network, you listen for a day or two, and you see what they're talking about. And I'm not even, I'm not talking about total immersion. I'm talking 15, 20 minutes, you know, mm -hmm. 20 minutes, twice a day. That's it. And um, in the beginning, you'll spend more time because <laughs> you're just curious. You just want to know. <laughs> it's like, it's like you fell through the rabbit hole, you know, it's like, where is this it's it's i have one client that describes it as the caribbean sea it looks so beautiful and blue and then you go under the surface and it's teeming with life you know <laughs> but it, it's it's um it's so interesting because you find things that you never even knew existed and they were right there and then um you know you don't push and you don't sell you just fall into these conversations you spend a day or two figuring out what people are talking about and you fall into these conversations and they want to welcome new people into these conversations and if you're a person that has something to say that's of value they're like hey welcome come on <laughs> say something else <laughs> and then they start following you and this is you know once you go through three or four iterations that's a relationship now okay Okay. And then once you have that relationship, that's when you can say, hey, why don't you come to my free webinar? Okay. I mean, if, if you're interested in this, you might be interested in checking out my webinar. Come, come meet my people. I love that. I love that. And what I'm hearing from you is, because I think, I think this is maybe where people get hung up, because they begin to just think, you know, I've got to be getting followers and putting content out there. And <laughs> it sounds to me like you're saying, you know, keep in balance. You've got to be following, listening, and engaging in dialogue, and you've got, you know, to be um, getting the quality followers. You've got to be putting content out there. So it's like a, it's like a scale that you've got to keep in balance. Is that correct? It is. And and what's really nice is all of the output stuff. You could have a team member do that for you. You just need to do the listening and the engaging. I just, I just had a, I just had an aha moment. That makes total sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So having, you know, like my, my virtual assistant, she, she always does the Hootsuite post and, you know, recycling from all my different media, you know, for a couple of weeks in advance, but it's my job to be going in there doing those safe search and, and engaging yes. in those conversations. Yes. Okay. Oh, I love this. It's like creating this little, like private, very customized networking event that you can attend in your pajamas. <laughs> This, and this is this is this juicy stuff is all in your total social PR system as well, right? So just so people know, they can, you know they don't have to know what it means to have a Hootsuite save search because that can be you know overwhelming for some people, right? Yeah, but honestly, if you just go into Hootsuite, Hootsuite has amazing resources, okay? Um, or they have something called Hootsuite University. I think it's like twenty or thirty dollars a month. If you sign up for one month, you'll know everything you need to know. Uh, or you can come join my program too. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. But, but, but really, I mean, without doing, using a social media manager tool, you're only doing half the equation of social media. Okay, I'm starting to get it. I'm starting to, you know, wake up. You know, I'm on your total system. My, my <laughs> issue is always, like, having the time to go through the lessons on the time that I should be doing them. But you're making me, like, I need to go in there and see what's, <laughs> what's in there. So, no, it, it, it's so full of stuff. <laughs> it's all stuff. Yeah. So, um, so if you're if you're enjoying that conversation and if you're welcome guests and you've, if you've got something to contribute, then you know you can just add in like those invites, like you like you yeah. said before. So what about what about for the people who really have not started at all on social media, or they're just really making baby steps in that direction as a small business owner, as an expert, like a coach, trainer, consultant, and they how do they get started finding those quality contacts that they can you know sort of begin to build a following? What is your advice for first steps? It's the listening. It's the really same. the listening. It's okay. the same thing. I mean, you know, it's your business. And, and here, here's a really good um, indicator. I actually just wrote a blog post about this like 
five minutes before we got on the phone. Um, but think of what I do is like when I do a new client, like a potential client conversation, um, I have a, a sheet of questions that I ask and leave room for, you know, making notes and things like that. And down in the bottom right corner, I have a box. And in that box, I write the words that really hit home emotionally mm -hmm. for the people that I'm talking to. Mm -hmm. Because these are their keywords. Right. These are my keywords. Okay. Right. And basically, I mean, to boil it down to simple math, keywords are the words that people type into Google search boxes. Right. That's, that's, that's like I mean, they're, they're up in the middle of the night with a glass of wine at 3 a.m. having a problem and typing those keywords in. And those are what the keywords are. Those are the words that you want to build into your copy. This is the big secret of SEO. <laughs> you know, use those words, you'll find the right people. It's, you don't have to hire a consultant and pay them thousands yeah. of dollars. You need to know what those words are in your business because you need to work them into everything that you do, right. on and off. And the reason that you want to do this offline is because let's say we meet in a networking event, okay? I'm, I'm talking to you about the work that I do. You get very excited about it. You go back to your computer or you're on your phone in the corner going, oh my God, I just met this amazing woman. She's brilliant, right? <laughs> and But the words that you're going to use when you describe what I do are my words. Yes. Yes. So now you are typing my keywords into Facebook. Right. That's gold. Right. Because that's not me typing them in there. That's it's you typing, you them, typing in there. them in there. Yeah. 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 And then you had mentioned me, so it goes back to my site. That's Google Gold. Okay. Okay. I love that. I love that. So, you know, for so for the people who are a little bit more established, they're already getting these, you know, uh, first sessions with their clients. They have clients they can talk to. They can make notes of those important words that are emotional triggers. And for people who don't have any clients right now, they can just interview potential clients or people who might fall into their category and interview them and, you know, find out these things, right? Also ask yourself, because in most cases, um, you know, people with small businesses, what do they do? They, 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 they start businesses about something that they heal in themselves, a need they themselves needed. So, oh, sorry. There's the cat. Hello, cat. <laughs> She's welcome to our interview, absolutely. <laughs> This is my CFO. So um, <laughs> <laughs> she does this all the time. So um, now she got me off track. But it's, it's um, okay. um, basically, um, you, you really want to build these words in. And um, um, if if you um, do not have the clients yet, you know, reach within yourself and say, okay, I created this business to solve this need. What are the reasons? that people will come to me. And there are tools, like you can go online and use the Google um, Keyword Planner tool and do searches. There's also, there's a really cool website called hashtagify.me. And um, Hashtagify.me, mm -hmm. Yes, and what that will do is you just type in a hashtag, and a hashtag is a word with a pound sign in front of it that denotes a conversation. And you want to track these in your social media management tool as well, because this is where the conversations are happening. So let's say you're a health coach, okay, and there's all these conversations happening around hashtag green smoothie. You're going to find all these people that are gathering around this word. This is the campfire, you know? Go to the so green smoothie people. <laughs> All the smoothie people are your people. Okay, you put that word down. Okay, there's 2,000 people talking about green smoothies. You've got a network. You know so what? I'm the, sure there are, actually. You know? There are. Yeah. There are. So Hashtagify is someplace where you can go, and you can research these hashtags. And what it does is you type in one hashtag, and then it, it comes up with an image of like a spider web of all of these different hashtags. Did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what happens? is you'll come up with these words that you never thought of because in most cases the keywords are not the words you think they are. Right, because we're always thinking in our, yeah. you know, we're kind of stuck in our own thinking and a lot of times we use a lot of jargon. It come, it could come from our, you know, the time we were in training to become the coach or consultant that we were becoming or, you know, our business jargon. I remember when I was working in a marketing agency for the longest time, you know, we had this real special language that nobody else spoke like that, right? And it's getting out of that and yeah. refocusing to, you know, the re actual way that your target group is thinking and concerned, what they're concerned about in their language. Yeah. Always, like, if you feel like you're kind of going down the wrong path, just think it's about them, it's not about them. Exactly. So, so what I'm interested in, and like, before I go to the final question, I'm going to sneak another little one in there, which is, you know, I've heard a lot about 
we, you know, whether it's email marketing, yes, we're talking about e sign, or whether it's social media, you know, there's always this sort of Pareto principle that, that people are saying, you know, it has to be when you're putting content out there. So let's say you've got the people you were listening, you've gotten those quality people on board, now you're driving content out to them. The Pareto principle that you always hear is 80% value and per private and like maximum 20% um, promotional. So, you know, inviting people to your marketing webinars is would be considered as a promotional type of content, I'm assuming. So what, yes. is, what is your take on that? Do you, or do you stand behind that? Absolutely, that's 100% accurate. Okay. Um, but you really want to give more than you get. Okay. okay. And by doing that, you'll get more. Okay. Because, I mean, if people want to do business with people they like, okay. they don't like salesmen. Right. Right. You know, they want you, you know, they want to feel a connection. And you're not going to build that connection by hard sales. Right. It just, you know, it, it repels people. Right. It repels the people I want to be around anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And I, I, just, I don't, I don't like that. And the other thing, the other thing that I think is really important to do too, and a lot of people don't do this, is to really manage their Twitter accounts. Um, there are Twitter management tools that are really inexpensive too. That I, I um, that are the, probably the best out there are Manage Glitter, which is twelve dollars a month. And um, um, oh gosh, now I lost the name of that other one. <laughs> it fell out of my head. It will come. Um, um, Tweepy, Tweepy, T W E P P I. Tweepy. Yeah, no, T W E I. Okay. And um, that one I think is seven dollars a month or eight dollars a month, something about uh, something around there. But what it will do is you can go in and you can um, like generate a list of specific Twitter followers. Like you could say, okay, I want to follow all of the followers of Parenting Magazine. Okay. And what it'll do is it'll pull up a list of all of the followers of Parenting Magazine, and you just have to go follow, 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 okay. and a little profile of them. The other thing that it does is it helps you clean up your Twitter following okay. because um, you know you want to be as effective as you can yeah. in your social yeah. media outreach, and you know sometimes people just follow you. There's not a lot of restriction and rule right. in the Twitter universe, so um, you know you can set up. Um, filters in there where anybody that doesn't have a profile image and most people that don't have profile images are spam accounts okay. so you can follow all of those people okay. you can follow all of the people that tweet more than 50 times a day because that's going to be you know viagra pushes from malaysia right. you know <laughs> yeah um, and, and and the thing is too is that these accounts also open you up to spam okay so, um, you know, and this is something you can totally outsource to a virtual assistant, but by getting rid of all of those, um, you know, followers that you wouldn't want to be connected to, it opens up the space to be connected to more followers. Right, right. So, so, so this is called um, Manage Twitter or Tweepy. And is Man it? Manage Flitter. At Manage Flitter and Tweepy. Okay, and are those similar to Tweet Adder? They're better than Tweet Adder. They're better than Tweet Adder. Oh, good to know. Okay. Tweet, tweet Adder used to be the go-to product, but um, it's not a web-based product. Okay. And um, Twitter changed their rules a couple of months ago because you used to be able to automate this process. Okay. And you can't automate it anymore. You have to manually follow and unfollow people. And um, since that happened, they've really not kept up with the upgrade, so it crashes a lot, and there's a lot of funky little quirky things happening. So... Okay. Um, um, even if you have Tweet Adder, I recommend moving to one of the other ones because okay. it's easier to use and it's easier to get help with because it's a web-based application. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, so we're coming up to my final question. And, um, so okay. let's just assume that these people have listened to all of your advice. They've been listening, building relationships. You know, Now they're not bothering anyone because they're just totally giving so much value and showing up personally and you're becoming a person that people can interact with. And so they've invited people to their webinar. People have gotten on board. So what are some ideas or you know recommendations you might have? Like how now that they're on the webinar for during or after that you can use social media to, you know, generate more buzz around your webinar during the webinar or keep in touch afterwards because, you know, not everybody who's on your webinar is, you know, going to take you up on that offer you're making right now. So, but you still want to, you know, keep engaged with them. So what, do, what would you say about that? Well, definitely, I mean, once they sign up for the webinar, they're now on your list. Yeah. So definitely, you know, engage with them that way. You can even have them on, you know, a separate list where you're engaging, you know, on topics of the webinar. Um, 
um, in social media, I would, you know, just, you know, engage with them, have conversations, comment on their things, um, invite them to be guests or guest blog on your blog or um, feature them. You can do like a Facebook uh, feature of the week and feature somebody, like somebody that you really want to grow a relationship yeah. with. Um, and when people see that you do this, even if it's not them, they're like, oh, wow. Um, just by being in her community, I'm exposed to all of this. And, um, you know, just do things that are creative, that make people feel special. Um, any, it, I think for the most part, um, most people don't treat people very well. <laughs> yeah, because they just want, 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 right? And, and I, I think if you just take the time, I mean, what I like to say is part of my philosophy and my program is that the golden rule counts. Yeah. You know, if you, if you look at what the golden rule says, it says do unto others as others would do unto you. If you apply that to everything that you do, I mean, it's just a better place all around. You know, I mean, treat people the way you want to be treated. And, and, and I know sometimes we're busy and we're trying and we want to make money and we want to get out there. And we, but just you know, pull back a little bit. It's a really powerful tool, social media. And, it, and you never know who's watching. So always remember, like, you know, it's like when your mom would tell you, like, make sure you've got clean underwear when you leave the house in the morning. <laughs> exactly. No, I, I love this, you know, because um, what you're saying, you know, I mean, just to sum up our whole conversation, what you're saying is this is all about listening and giving. And, um, you know, that will lead to for, for good things for everybody. And uh, I love that. That's, you know, that's true for any relationship. You know, if I'm in a friendship with you, Donna, which we are friends, you know, if I just were, you know, like uh, always wanting something, you taking something for you, that would not be the basis for a friendship at all. And it's the same. The same is true for the people that we want to work with in our business. And so we, we lose sight of that because, you know, we do have monetary goals. We do have, you know, business goals with our list building and, and, and things we want to achieve, you know, from a business perspective. Perspective, but I think you're saying like that is that is the golden basis from which everything else is possible, right? It is, and and I I, mean, I have experienced it personally, and I've experienced it through my clients for years. Because prior to doing what I'm doing, I worked at a law firm for 25 years. I um, was a virtual assistant. I was an author's assistant. I was a social media manager. I've done all of these things. So I've worked with all different kinds of people. And the one thing that is consistent, whether, I mean, I know this is mostly about webinars and I've been spouting and everything else, but the thing is, is that if you can portray this feeling of giving and this feeling of caring about other people and respect, if you can portray that in a virtual space, and if you can put that across on social media, that puts you heads and shoulders above of the majority. Because yeah, yeah. the majority is take, 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 yes. get, 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 get. And, if you, and it's not that hard to do. And I mean, I like to say I do a combination of social media PR and what my mother taught me. And <laughs> you should put that in your system. The total social media PR and what my mother told me system. <laughs> but it's, it's I hear her voice in my head and when I started to do social media you know I mean like I had clients that were like I want to go viral I was like it doesn't happen like that you know you have to build it it has to happen organically yeah. you can't make viral happen you know you have to care you know and, and it really does I mean you have to I mean what makes something go viral is by tapping into the heart yeah. of the people you're talking to okay and when you talk to the right people like tapping into the heart of a bunch of internet marketers isn't going to work. It's not because it's like tapping into the heart of a bunch of used car salesmen. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's yeah. oh, those poor people. We don't want to give them a bad rap. The <laughs> same. I mean, you know, in, unless you're in the car industry, those are likely not your clients. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, if you, my, my, my whole point of this is that if you build that solid foundation of people that care about what you're talking about and you treat them well, that will quickly grow into a bigger platform of yeah. the right people. Yeah. And when you have the right message delivered in the right tone and the caring, the caring voice and you tap into that market, you can't lose. Yeah. You yeah. can't. And it's really, it's so simple because it's basically, you know, shut your mouth and do a little listening. Yeah. Stop trying to sell and listen to what these people want. They People will tell you what they need yeah, online. Yeah. They'll open up online and, in, a, in, a, in a 
more frequently than they will in any other format because they feel nobody's looking. Right. So if you take, if you, if you really study what your market is doing online, you can quickly um, just add a little strategy to that and build that into everything that you do. It's to thousands of people that need you. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that's going to be my big takeaway for today. I'm going to write, shut your mouth and listen. I'm on a big piece of paper. Like I always hang everything up on the wall. And, like it's a mantra for the week of the next month. That's what I'm taking away. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> but it's, it's really true. I mean, it because, is. I mean, particularly, I mean, we're, we've all been in that space where, oh my God, if this doesn't sell them, they are yes. working it. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We put it, we put a lot of effort into, you know. Well, Tanya, thank you so much. I so much appreciate it. It's been so fun talking to you. I would love to even have, you know, another interview soon about like the whole platform idea because that's fascinating to me and what that means. And I think that's something that people are going to begin talking about more and more. But that's a whole other interview. Okay. But, you know, what I wanted to ask you before we close is like, how can people find out more about you, about your, you know, socialsagepr.com, about your system? How can they, how can they, you know, deepen these, you know, shut your mouth and listen principles? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start doing um. I'm gonna start doing graphics with those. Exactly. <laughs> and then a social media tip. <laughs> Do it on Canva. <laughs> um, it's socialsagepr.com is my website, and everything is on there. The, my program is the Total Social PR System, and it's a six-month program where we go through twelve modules of you know, how to do social media and PR right. Um, and, you know, part of, you know, a lot of what we talked about here today. And then on the PR side, it's, you know, how to become your own publicist, essentially. And, you know, how to connect with the media in a way that doesn't piss them off. Yeah. Because they need they need us more than we need them. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and then I also do it in a weekend. We, I have a... Yes, uh, that a is new, I know. <laughs> Did this once and it was really successful, so I'm already planning the second one. But um, it's called Build It Live, and we go through my entire six month program in a weekend in a retreat in Westchester County in New York, and um, we do it in our pajamas with s'mores. <laughs> really? I'm coming. <laughs> you got me with pajamas and s'mores, and I don't care what you're teaching. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I we had people crying, and I was like, I can't believe they're crying over social media. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the pajamas, you know, it's the nostalgia. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but that, that's where that's where I ate you Girl Scout cookies. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. You're gonna get. You're gonna pay for that and give me some new ones. Get, you remember, listen and give. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> no, it's okay. Your son ate them, so we're good. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, and we do it all on a weekend, and you know, we did that once, and um, it was it was a lot of fun. So I plan on doing more of those, and um, it's really I, I really feel strongly that every small business owner needs to know how to do this. These and and um, I really feel strongly about teaching them, not selling them, but yeah. teaching them how to build this into their businesses. Um, it is crucial and it's not hard to do and it increases the value of your business and your credibility yeah absolutely well we'll close with those words and i i appreciate it so much and i did that this morning so we're going to continue on like a virtual high five for a great interview <laughs> thanks so much donna cravata for those listeners out there again my name is shelia stevens from shelliastevens.com and um, hope to see you in the next interview we're going to be continuing with some interviews in the next weeks with some amazing and giving experts like Donna um, to talk more about all kinds of things like mashups with webinars and other things. So <laughs> get, look forward to that. So thanks. Bye, everybody.